everyone, Jorgelina here. Thank you so much for being here. Whether this is your first time, your second time, or you've watched all of my videos, I am so excited that you have decided to click on this one. Today we are going to be talking about handbags. I have a tag video. I was tagged by the amazing Dawn Loves Couture to create a video similar to the one that she just recently did, her one and done video. Um, so these are bags that I may own only one of, but I'm done with the brand, or I don't consider or want to add any more of those kind of handbags into my collection. If you're interested in that kind of content, I would love it if you continued watching along. If you are a passionate teacher, just like I am, and you're looking for some creative ways to engage your students please consider taking a look at my teacher playlist. I'll go ahead and look at uh, link it in the description at the bottom so that you can get started on making some amazing activities with all the tips, tricks, and freebies that I include in those videos. But let's jump into Dawn's topic. So first, I do want to say I uh, did a video tagged by, actually, I don't remember who tagged me in that video. But somebody tagged me in that video, the one and not done video, and I did that tag. That was a tag started by Lo Ye Ye. Um, and I included some bags that I only had one of and really wanted to add more of that brand into my collection. So a bag that I, a brand that I was not done with. I'll go ahead and I'll link that video here for you to consider uh, to watch next. In that video, uh, ever since I did that tag video, I've actually added another one of every one of those bags except the Negetti one up here. So that Negetti one I love but it's more of like a summery um, like vibe for me so I might end up adding one later in the summer. Um, I'll see how I'm feeling, how I'm shopping when that time comes around but every other bag that I mentioned in that video I have since added another one to my collection from that brand. Um, so I don't really have any uh, brands that I only have one bag of. Um, yeah, I think I'm safe to say that. There's no brands that I only own one of other than Negetti, um, but that is not a brand that I am done with. So continuing in that conversation, I decided to turn this video a little bit into uh, the brands that I don't consider or the brands that maybe I have owned one of and have since gotten rid of because they didn't work out for me. So for me, if a bag doesn't work, I will let it go. I am very much on the same boat that Dawn is. I know she mentioned it in her video that when I purchase a bag, especially a high end luxury bag, my intention is to keep it. It's definitely not uh, a bag that I want to sell after. It's always the intention that I am going to use that bag forever. So because of that, I want to make sure that I tackle this in a very, very three hours later very very like my side my point of view manner because the brands that i'm going to talk about are brands that other people love so i really do want to talk about why they're just not brands for me and why i would not consider them at all um and then i also have a couple that i am really tempted by and the reason why they are not in my collection yet all right, so first up, and I do have a list, um, just kind of, there's a lot of writing in here, <laughs> uh, but I do have a list um, of the those brands. So some brands that I consider that I don't own and then brands that I am completely done with or brands that I've never owned and really have no interest in. So the first one up that I have is the bags that I've sold that I only had one of that have since left my collection and I don't intend on adding more. And the first one of that is Chanel. So I did let go of a Chanel bag and I, the reason why I just have no interest, I just feel like that's not my lane. I feel like Chanel bags are very, very pricey. I know that Louis Vuitton is too, but there's something about Louis Vuitton that brings me a ton of joy. I love using it. That is definitely my style. I like the loudness of it. I have no issues with that. And with Chanel, I feel like if I were ever to spend that kind of money on a Chanel bag, it would be a very much 
like a baby bag that I would use very little. And I just don't really want to do that. That is not how I want my bags to be. My intention is not to have this giant collection. I want a collection that is curated, that I use, that I love, that I enjoy using. So that's why for me, Chanel is out. It is not a brand that I would consider adding anymore. I had my little, um, like my little feet wet um, into Chanel. If you're interested in that video, I'll also link it in the description below or tag it up here. Uh, but I'm done with the Chanel brand. There's That's not something that I would really consider in the future. And I am strictly talking about handbags. I know that Dawn talked about like, um, like jewelry and stuff like that. I love Chanel, like perfumes and skincare. That's just completely different, but not Chanel handbags. I just don't think they're for me. Uh, the other one that I have is Bottega. And I know that my best friend is going to absolutely hate me for this. Uh, my best friend Fabian loves Bottega Veneta. That is like his pride and joy. He loves it. And I think that because he loved it so much is why I decided to get a piece. I actually had two pieces. I had a wallet that I actually sent out to him in this amazing green and it never made it to him. It got lost in uh, transit and till this day, we've never been able to fight it uh, because it was going to my friend. I didn't really think about insurance um, or anything like that. Like I insured it for what they claimed is that I insured it for the price of the package and the way that we did it because he does live in Spain um, was that he sent me a penny through PayPal so that I could purchase the um, the mailing thing, <laughs> the postage <laughs> so that I can uh, purchase the postage. And so they said that that's what I would get back a penny. Uh, so it never made it to him and that's devastating. I'm hoping that maybe sometime um, in the process that will come back to us somehow, but I highly doubt it. Uh, that was one of the wallets. And then the other piece that I own is a piece that is now with candy uh, to be sold. It is like a little foam pouch and it just, it just wasn't for me. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I like loud. I do. I like loud. I like um, the monogram. I like Damier Bean. I like knowing that what I'm carrying is kind of flashy. <laughs> um, so it just, Bottega just didn't, didn't scratch that for me. It was just, you know, a little too muted for what I like to get out of my handbags, if that makes any sense. Um, and then the other two are very uh, similar is Valentino is one of them. Uh, that bag also went to Candy. And Valentino for me, I love to look at it. Everything that Valentino does, I just, I love it. It's like the opposite of not flashy. It's like super flashy and I really love it, but it just does not go with my style. I am just not that edgy. I'm not. I'm just not that edgy. Um, and I feel like you need to have a very like edgy personality to pull off a Valentino bag. And again, that's how I feel. So I didn't feel comfortable wearing that bag. Um, it just, it, I never wanted to pick it up. So it did go to Candy, and that is a brand that I do not see myself ever adding to my collection um, again. Another one is Fendi. Um, Fendi actually is a bag that I owned. I guess, no, it's not. Fendi I would consider adding more to my collection. So that's not true. But there is very specific, just one bag, uh, one style of bag of Fendi that I would love, and that's the baguette. Um, I think that's one of my dream bags. But the reason behind me not adding one is because just the resale value is terrible. It's just so bad. I bought a tote. I ended up sending it to Candy. It sat for so long until finally sold for like less than half of retail, like a lot less than half of retail. So I don't consider losing money because again, I shop for bags that I intend to keep forever. And it just, that bag just didn't work out for me. And I just don't want to run the risk of making that same mistake. So that's why I'm so afraid of the baguette. But I would consider a baguette in my collection. I feel like it would work wonderfully for me. Uh, I do love looking at it. But again, what deters me is the fact that I do intend to keep these bags forever. And if it just doesn't end up working out for me like the other one did, I'm just out of so much money. And I really, I'm not... I don't have that kind of money to play around with like that, right? Like to just kind of bet on it. 
Um, so I have been to the boutique and I've touched it and I felt it and I know that I love them. But again, I just buying it at the boutique, I just don't know if I would want to spend that kind of money. So maybe going in the pre-love route, if like Candy ever gets a baguette, um, I would love it. So that would be a brand that I owned, I sold, didn't work out for me. I have none in my collection at the moment, but I would like to add another piece into my collection at some point, And that would be very exclusively a, a baguette. Uh, let's see what else do I have here. Um, bags that I don't own, but want to eventually own. So these are bags that I have zero experience with, but I'm really, really tempted by. And one of them is Loewe. So I really want a Loewe puzzle bag. But again, it's that price point that just Oh, right. That's like a very quiet too. It's not loud. So I feel like maybe I'll end up feeling um, very like a very understated and it doesn't end up working out for what I want it to. But man, I love it. Um, I have really considered the horse. I actually have one on pre order uh, that it's very similar. So I'm hoping that kind of gets me out of that wanting a puzzle bag because again the puzzle bag is so expensive that I'm just not sure if I'll end up using it as much as I think I will uh, because I do always end up gravitating to uh, my LV bags and I also really had considered the um I wrote it down here Songmont so I really like the Songmont bag I, I'll put a picture on it but I did watch a video uh by um somehow adulting that threw me off of that bag so it's just something that I stopped considering after watching her video so thank you for that I do a lot of research before uh, even if it's on a contemporary brand on a lower price and then I also watched a video by the leather guy that one that like cuts up all the bags and his uh opinion on Songmont wasn't very favorable so it just something that I just took it out of my mind and it didn't it automatically became not a replacement for my Loewe uh, want but I do think that the horse might be something that I end up enjoying so I will give that a try and then see if maybe a Loewe puzzle bag is in my future so it's a bag that I have zero experience with a brand that I have zero experience with, but I would absolutely love to at some point add it into my collection. I wish it wasn't so hard. Like it wasn't this much money to try something out. Uh, like if I could just return it right after it, like knowing it didn't work out, but that's just not how it works. I really do like to give bags a fair shot uh, before I count them off because I spent the money. So yeah, that, that's really hard for me to do on brands that I'm not familiar with. Another brand like that is Gucci. So I have had Gucci SLGs in the past and I have had Gucci bags from the outlet, but I've never had any like Gucci from the boutique, whether it's pre-loved or not. Um, my sister, uh, one of my sisters absolutely loves the brand. She has a ton of it. I am really drawn to Gucci. Like I love their monogram, but then I feel like if I'm going to try and go for a monogram bag, I'll always end up going for my Louis. I just, that's, I love it. I love this stuff behind me. Uh, so that's why I haven't actually ever bought a Gucci bag. The price range is very much similar to LV, but I just, again, it's just that push. Um, and then also Gucci just doesn't have the same resale value that Louis Vuitton does. And again, I do buy bags with the intention to keep them, but if I'm going to play around with something and not know whether or not it's going to work out for me, I would like to get my money back if I have to let it go. And I just know that that wouldn't be the case um, with Gucci. I actually do have a video coming up soon where I'm comparing my coach bag to a Gucci bag, but that is not my Gucci bag. It is my sister's uh, who has kindly let me borrow it to do that review and comparison. But again, uh, it's not mine. So I don't own that. And I did have a reversible tote. I've done a short on it, but that bag is now with my uh, mother-in-law and she loves it. And that was an outlet bag, not uh, from the Gucci store. So yeah, I they just I'm just too afraid to play around with it. But I would love to add uh, maybe in the future some uh, Gucci like monogram type of bag into my collection at some point. 
All right, another bag. This is not a luxury brand. It's a contemporary uh, brand that I don't own. I have owned in the past, uh, but that is Dooney & Burke. So that was one of my very first loves. If you ever watched one of my really, really older videos, I talked about how that was my very first bag ever, a Dooney, um, in the multicolor print that they had, the like graffiti sketch art thing. Um, a long time ago in the early 2000s, that was my very first bag right after uh, finishing up high school, maybe during high school. I don't remember, but it was one of my first bags. Uh, obviously, I don't have it anymore. I wish I did. But the bag that I would love from Dooney, and I, I do think maybe at some point I'll get it, is the one with the big duck in it. I really, really love that bag. It just, it's something that catches my eye all the time, and I feel like I would use it because it's so funky. Um, but that duck bag is definitely something that I don't own. I don't think I have enough experience with the brand because it was so long ago when I owned it and I wasn't really like into handbags. It was just something that I thought I was super cool owning, <laughs> uh, but I didn't really know a lot about it. But after watching people like Jackie or like AKB Bags, who's just so love the brand, uh, it really, really makes me fall in love with their type of leather and how luxurious it is. So that duck bag is definitely something that I will at some point, I think at some point I will add into my collection. Um, another one, this is like a both yes and no, and that's Hermes. I... There is no way that I would ever, 100%, a quota bag is just not something that I would ever hunt down. It's not something that I would go on that journey, but I would absolutely love a Picatinn in my collection. If I was able to find it in the pre-sell, pre-loved market, not pre-sell, pre-loved market at a good price, that would be something that I would absolutely love to have. Uh, it is not something that I'm actively looking for or anything um, like that, but I would so love to own a Picatinn. I think that's probably like my dream bag. Um, I don't know what it is about it. I know that there's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. I just got done saying a little while ago about how I like flashy, but I don't know what it is about that Picatinn bag that I just love so much. It might be the fact that it's Hermes. I don't know. But the other Hermes bags don't make me feel that way. Uh, so I do want to try and get the... Uh, equivalent of the Picatin bag from Dress Up Your Purse, um, but I haven't done that either. So I'm, I just kind of want to be careful with where I put my money. And I, again, don't want this giant collection that I don't use. So I have been really, really careful lately uh, in what I purchase, what I add. I want it to be forever pieces. Um, so in this last year, from what I bought this year, the only thing that I've let go of is my coach quilted backpack. Everything else has stayed. So everything else has stayed in my collection that I bought and it stayed. Um, so that's how I intended, intended to go. Everything that I've let go of is pieces that I know I haven't used and they're sitting and I don't want that anymore. So everything that you see behind me are bags that I have 100% used this year um, and I am still very much in love with. So I've been trying to really let go of those pieces that I'm not using, uh, which is why uh, I have a very careful wish list and it's not really a wish list it's more of like if the cards are right then we'll see where where it goes all right so now these are my zero interest never been into uh they just a bag that i know won't work for me not at all and this will be my last little piece of the video and we talked about our mess already definitely zero interest in quota bags or anything like that it's just not for me not in my price range not right like it, it's just something that I don't even dream about, right? It's not, even, I feel like even if uh, it came to a point where I had that kind of uh, income to just use on a bag, I just don't think that I would on those bags. They just don't tickle my fancy. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I They're just not for me. I don't, I like looking at them on other people, but I just don't feel like I would um, love carrying them. Um, yeah. So another one is Dolce & Gabbana. There is absolutely nothing in their um, just brand that I've ever actually liked. Uh, looking at it doesn't give me any like warm and fuzzies like Minx for All says. I just it's not something that calls me at all. So there's really, I could really say there's nothing in that brand that has ever like caught my eye and made me say like, hmm, I might consider that bag. I don't know what it is about it, just not my style. 
Um, so definitely not something I would add to my collection. Um, the other one is the B word that nobody wants to say anymore. Uh, again, something that has never been my style. I have enjoyed it on other people, but it's just not something that I would add to my collection. Um, even the ones that are like more understated, I just feel like they're not for me. Their uh, brand tends to be way too loud for anything that I would ever want to bring into my little sanctuary. So that is definitely a bag, uh, a brand that I won't consider for X, Y, and Z, uh, wear whatever you want type of deal, but that's not something that would come into my collection. And the last one, oh, I have two more, Dior. Dior is another one. Love, 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 love their skincare and all that stuff, but their bags, just not for me. The Lady Dior's that go everywhere, the totes, the, I just, they're just not for me. Um, I feel like the Lady Dior looks like the most uncomfortable bag I've ever seen in my life. I just feel like it would not be functional at all. It's hard and like hard looking. I just, that is just not a bag for me. I don't care that Princess Diana wore it. I don't care where it came from. It's just not a bag that uh, you would ever see me carry at all. And then the other one is the saddle bag. I love looking at it, but at the same time, it looks like a kidney bean to me uh, or just a kidney. I just not something that I would consider uh, carrying. I don't know what it is about it. It really does look like a saddle and it's just not for me. I'm laughing because I know my best friend feels the same way about it. I just don't get it. I don't get that bag. And I'm so sorry if you love it. I really am. And when I see people carrying it, I do think it looks really cool. I like, I, again, edgy. I like how it looks with outfits, but I would just feel so silly carrying that thing around. Like the shape is just not something that I feel like would be functional for me at all, at all, at all, at all. So definitely not a bag I would consider um, owning at all ever. Um, so Dior is 100% out for me. I was liking the Dior totes. I like looking at those, but I'm a tote girl. But again, they just look really heavy to me. So I'm um, not a bag that I would consider really bringing into uh, my little sanctuary um, ever. And the last one that I have here is Versace. Uh, it's just not, again, not a brand that I feel like would be for me at all, ever. I don't like it. It's, that is another level of flashy for me that it's just not for me. So I've never seen anything in their stores that have caught my eye, whether it be the outlet or the regular store. It's just not a brand for me. So that's it. Those are all my bags. I know that's a lot of talking. That's like nearly 20 minutes of me just blah, 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 blah. So thank you for being here if you've been here um, that long. I also did want to share. I know I said that I was going to talk about the update of the necklace from She Said Yes. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I already did my sponsored video with them. But I will still have everything linked in the description because this necklace is working out so great for me. And they are having their Black Friday sale already. I really want the matching earrings. I'm really enjoying using this. It's not giving me a rash like I talked about in that video. So I am 100% just loving this necklace. Um, I have taken it off to shower and stuff, but I do put it right back on. I've really, really enjoyed carrying it, uh, using it, and um, I feel really nice with it on. I could hardly feel like it's there, but then when I'm like walking in the mirror or I take a picture and I see the little sparkle, I really, really, really like it. So just wanted to give you that uh, quick update on it in case you were interested to see how it's working out for me. I can't wait to see you on the next one. Thank you so much for being here. Please consider subscribing, liking this video, and keeping the conversation in the comments. I am going to tag some people in the description if you would be interested in doing this tag video. I would love to see which brands you are done with or have never considered. I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!